Well, I think that the toughest thing academically about this is having multiple robots work together with very limited human interaction. The CSIRO team has quite a few different experts and groups, subgroups in it. We have a multi-agent coordination system that's uh, been built by Georgia Tech. We have a legged team, which is developing a hexapod. A SLAM team, which is basically computing the multi-agent SLAM solution. A perception team, basically identifying objects and pushing that in the map. And then furthermore, we actually are partnered with Emerson, which is a drone autonomy company, who is uh, using the SLAM solution that we are on board their drones. And then they're flying those drones alongside the, the ground platforms too. We're using quite a few different systems in this challenge and uh, I think some of the core technology that really differentiates us is um, we have a pretty robust multi-agent SLAM solution so all the robots are actually communicating their pose with each other and sort of fusing their maps in real time. We're building our own hexapod as a completely standalone independent system that's, that's customized for the underground environment. So I think this challenge is really forcing this diverse group to basically do one thing and it's really bringing all of these technologies together much more rapidly than it would in a more abstract academic sense. I think it has a lot of applications outside of um, underground robotics. You know, anywhere you want to have a fleet of robots working together, operating in different industrial sites, around, you know, hospitals, in, in people's homes even, and really just solving that difficult set of mobility problems, communication problems that I don't think have really been addressed in such a concrete way before.